just to raise a really polite topic, I sometimes have trouble belching. I, I feel as though I need to burp and I can't create the energy. My, maybe my trunk muscles are shot. So it probably doesn't matter that I'm slouching, right? That, that has no impact on breathing or swallowing. I think you've probably already recognized that it does impact mm. many things, you know, beyond the belching. Um, it also impacts um, your comfort and preventing pain. Um, ALS doesn't typically cause pain, but a lot of people with ALS have pain because of positioning changes and, and muscle contractures and things like that. Mm. Um, you know, positioning also can affect your ability to make eye contact with your friends and family members and be able to maintain mm that connection with people when you're speaking with them or even if you're communicating um, without speech. Um, it also impacts your digestion and your ability to eat and a lot of people with ALS complain of constipation and so proper positioning can help assist with proper digestion. It also can help um, with breathing and with respiration and being able to get yourself in a proper alignment with your spine can allow proper rib excursion that we need in order to inflate the lungs and to deflate the lungs. So it's essentially, you know, we mm. talk about posture and it sounds kind of naggy, yeah. <laughs> but posture and positioning, what it truly comes mm. down to is mm. getting all of your body parts in the most perfect anatomical position that we can based on the way that human beings are designed and the way that our muscles and our joints and our bones mm. are supposed to function properly. So there's so many ways that proper positioning can be helpful. You know, something I, I am concerned mm. about too, I wanna mention um, mm. is that having good um, positioning consistently throughout the course of this disease is very important when you get to the point where you're um, requiring power wheelchair mobility and you're in a custom wheelchair, if you've been losing some muscle strength in your neck and your postural muscles there, and you tend to hang over to one side, this happens sometimes. And at first it's a little bit, and then you tend to spend a little bit more time there. And then when it, you go to try to get into a wheelchair with proper head support that helps you maintain this upright position, you may have contractures and you may not be able to get to the full and upright position. What is a contracture? Good question. So the contracture is essentially a, a muscle that's been in a shortened position because muscles can lengthen and shorten. And when they contract, they shorten. And when they relax, they lengthen. But if they remain in a shortened position for too long, they tighten up mm -hmm. and they don't always have the ability to extend once again after that. So that becomes the new normal. Exactly. The example you're using is you might not be able to recover from this position without mechanical assistance. And even with mechanical assistance, sometimes the muscles are just so tight or the joints are so used to being in that position, maybe there's some arthritis in your neck. And so when we go to try to correct you to the, the normal position, um, neutral alignment, it's too painful to get there. And so it's hard to I have so many related that. questions about this. Good. This really resonates. Um, my hands, um, I still have pretty good use of my hands. Mm -hmm. Starting to see some loss of, of muscle mass and skin between the thumb and the forefinger. And I've been shown some very simple exercises to do that help, I think, to keep my fingers from drawing into clubs or, or claws. Stuff as simple as when going to sleep, find a headboard and straighten out your hand and push against the headboard. Um, form circles with your fingers, particularly the little finger of the thumb and the forefinger in the thumb. These are, are uh, easy to do, uh, easy to do while you're not doing anything else, easy to do if you're doing something else, and they don't require any exertion at all. Is that kind of stuff helpful? Absolutely. And I think it's especially helpful when you're doing it kind of sprinkled throughout the day versus one giant exercise session that just yeah. totally wears you out and you need a nap afterward. And also I think in the positioning sense, you know, if you're having a little bit more tension in your flexors and less strength in your extensors on the opposite side to combat that, you know, in our body we have antagonist muscle groups where one does one thing and then the other one does the opposite and they're equal and opposite in the way that you've got yourself in a neutral um, position or capability of movement or strength. But when you have more strength, let's say in the flexors, that's what causes more of that kind of flexed claw position. 
And so, you know, using that movement and activating some of those opposite muscles mm. to extend the wrist and the fingers, that's really a great way to provide some of that antagonist um, opposite movement. Um, and then also things like, you know, sliding your hand underneath your pillow to flatten it and provide a little bit of overpressure to stretch it. Yeah. Or sometimes people will place the hand underneath their leg to stretch yourself straight. Um, or even just stretching your hands out on your legs can be helpful, pressing down with the other one. Like you mentioned, there's lots of ways to um, do little exercises during the day and it doesn't require a whole lot of thought or a whole lot of effort but it's good to do it here and there so that you can continue working against these um, positional changes. Yeah, hmm. that, that, again, that's, that's very helpful information. Uh, glad that without necessarily having planned it that I've been doing some of the right things, um, and, which probably is pretty normal. People tend to want to try to stop dysfunction before it takes over. We are problem solvers by nature. Yeah. And I think that's a huge strength. So I spend <clears throat> a ridiculous amount of time sitting because standing is exhausting. Yeah. Sitting is easy except you tighten up, you, you get stiff. I'll sit in a chair the way I'm sitting now. Uh, I can move my legs around, can certainly exercise my neck if that's exercise, and hands and arms. Um, sitting on a couch with my legs straight out in front of me or on a footstool, something like that. Um, that's helpful to get the, to, to keep my feet from swelling mm -hmm. due to inactivity. Um, but it has its own challenges, which is uh, atrophy and just loss of use and loss of use promotes less use. Uh, are there simple, practical, tips to avoid that kind of thing or is it um, uh, or is it more complicated than that? I think it can be either way depending on how much effort and thought you want to put into it. You know if you're spending a lot of time in a seated position you're going to have shortening of your hip flexors and this happens to the entire population with so many people working at computers all day long especially now working from home working 10 hour days because they're just there at work all day yeah. and so something as simple as just lying supine or flat on your back on your bed if you're able to do that and still breathe properly that can be a great way to stretch out those hip flexors and take a little bit of stress off your back because there's a lot of compression on your discs and your back and your neck when you're in a seated position for a long time there's other options besides going yeah going and lying down flat on your bed because for some people that's simply not an option or it's too much effort to be yeah. able to get into that position or it's really hard to breathe lying flat so other options yeah. for that would be you know if you're in a a power chair that has a recline function and you can tilt back. That's one way that you can go ahead and stretch out the hip flexors because you can get yourself into this reclined position um, that'll stretch you out. Hmm. Um, you can also utilize uh, a hospital bed in the same way where you can get yourself into a, a position where you're you know, as stretched out as, you're, as you'd like to get and as you're able to get. Also other options would be like a, a recliner. A lot of people spend a lot of time in their favorite easy chair, so you can use that recline function on that mm -hmm. um, and sitting upright for feeding and for you know, socializing and, and doing things like that. And sometimes it just feels nice to stretch out. Mm -hmm. So that's a really simple, um, you know, low effort, high yield exercise, if you wanna call it that, right. where mm -hmm. you're just kind of stretching out and maybe you spend a few minutes like that, maybe working on some breathing exercises. So you can kind of multitask with that too. So sometimes you're, you may be doing something that is truly an exercise and you don't even realize that it's something that's beneficial, such as stretching out your hip flexors and improving your, improving your, uh, your rib excursion with your breathing. Oh. But you can also do something more involved. You know, if you were to have your physical therapist and your occupational therapist uh, create a custom exercise program for you. So maybe you're struggling more with foot and ankle swelling and tightness and maybe some pain from the stiffness there. And maybe you're doing some um, active movements. Maybe you've got a few stretches you can do if you're using like a belt with your hands, if you've got good arm and hand function to pull and stretch the calf and the Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's having your caregiver or your spouse um, provide some stretching for you. So moving your legs or your arms around. And everybody's going to have a different set of manifestations of you know, pain or tension 
or some weakness. And so each person is going to need probably some different types of exercises depending on what types of issues they're having and, and how they're moving around typically and what position they're in a lot of the day. Just to, to recap for my own benefit, what I'm hearing you say is that there are many different types of, of customized or non-customized programs. They can be passive or active. They can be self-directed. They can be provided by a professional such as a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, <laughs> and family members uh, can help with some stretching. I think, I'm not fooling myself, to believe that physical therapy that focuses on stretching of those muscles, particularly those that have begun to atrophy, um, is certainly going to improve the quality of my life. Will it result in a, a longer, more comfortable life? Well, I think if you can prevent some of the contractures and keep the mobility of the joint, I think that does have a good potential of preventing pain and, and potentially maybe some dysfunction related to positioning, capability, um, and, and maintaining your mobility for as long as you can too. Okay. So it's, that's the goal. I want to ask you about skin, and I'm a little worried about as I get less and less mobile, particularly if I get confined uh, to bed or to a power chair or the combination, um, what happens to that great big organ that wraps your entire body? It's pretty important, isn't it? Yeah, gee. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's a, that's a really important topic, I think, because it's one of those uh, very important organs that we don't always think about and we kind of take it for granted until something goes wrong. Mm. And skin integrity is a huge concern, mm. um, you know, in our world because you can have skin breakdown if you have too much pressure in one area for too long and you can lose blood flow and you can get pressure ulcers and all kinds of bad stuff like that. Mm. So it's really important with your positioning, once again, we're coming back to positioning yeah. and the benefit being able to offload your tissues properly. So as human beings, we have something called bony prominences, which sounds fancy, but it's essentially where your bones stick out more. And that's where people will typically have their skin breakdown. Yep, so elbows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the heel, if yeah. you're lying on your back, your sacrum, or just below your low back, um, your hips on the sides. There's certain places that we just tend to have more um, pressure between our resting surface and the bone essentially on the other side of the skin. And so it's important to continue, um, you know, moving your body position. You know, that's why we shift a lot when we're in the movie theater, for instance, and you start to lose sensation in one of your legs because yeah. you need to get off of your nerve. There's lots of ways that we provide a good offloading of those bony prominences and prevent those um, areas that are more prone to skin breakdown. So um, one of the ways that we do that is with a custom power chair. One of the beauties of that really is being able to design something specifically for you. And we can actually use a pressure map, which is so cool and futuristic to see if we have offloaded you properly to get the, the pressure spread in the right way. And I think, you know, proper positioning there as well. You know, sometimes if your legs are more weak and they tend to kind of flop out, then yeah. having some bumpers to keep you in the right position, that just makes you more comfortable too. Your hips don't get as tight and sore. You know, other things would be having your armrests in the right position so that you're not getting a lot of pressure on the elbows. Another really cool feature is with mm. hospital beds. Essentially, it's, it's air pressure that changes depending on where your body is in the bed to kind of offload pressure. So if you move from a f more flat position to a more upright position, it'll move the air around to be able to take pressure off certain areas. And then there's other, you know, really simple things like using pillows, you know, making sure that you have um, some kind of a bumper underneath your Achilles tendon that keeps your heel from resting down on the bed. So there's lots of, lots of techniques, lots of tips. Um, to be able to preserve this important organ that is our skin. To me, just maybe only to me, that's a lot of new information that I've never been presented with, um, having never been bedridden for a long period of time. Um, I, I've never heard anybody talk about the importance of, of protecting the bony protuberances from... <laughs> <laughs> excessive contact with a with a hard surface and the impact on the skin. Mm -hmm. Well, one one more thing to sort of put in the tool basket of uh, questions to ask of the ALS Association. 
people and the folks at the multidisciplinary clinic who know this stuff. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I, I think overall that is sort of the underlying theme of all of this is that this is just so overwhelming and daunting and there's so much to learn and there's so much to process and there's so many things to know that you don't even know to ask about because you don't know it yet. And as you're learning all of these things from all of these different arenas and different um, sources, I think one of the biggest things I hope that you can take home with you and, and others hopefully too, is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel with this. And even though your presentation with this disease is different from anyone else and you're going to be unique, other people have been through a similar presentation previously, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. And there's people out there that specialize in this and they know things that you don't have to know. And so any questions or problems you have, don't be afraid of getting linked up with a, an, a multidisciplinary clinic because you've got all of those people within that clinic that can help you with their expertise, the ALS Association and the local chapter that you'll be working with. Um, there's just so much um, resource available among those um, avenues that I think it doesn't have to be quite so um, overwhelming because they can be the valve for that information for you and, and give you the information that you need when you need it and not just being presented with all of it up front. <laughs>